This is um, the same wires coming in. And now I got them into switches. So I have one wire going back out and I can choose if I want the power from each of the banks inside or outside. Uh, and I can also turn a bank completely on and off. And I have that wire outside so I can charge the UTV directly from solar. And then there is also another cable going up over the window and down and then I mounted the uh, MPT charge controller over here. It is still um, not a finished setup so it's still a bit messy with the cables. I recently got the rest of the parts here to it. So this is a test setup basically. Um, but it's coming in here and yeah, this monitor is too hard to see I guess on the camera. Um, but there, we're currently getting 25 watts which is not much but it's winter and it's some snow on some of the panels and yeah so and then we've got the new battery bank it's the ones in the in the back here Let's see if i can these batteries they're 290 amps each and there's four of them in series so that makes this system now the complete 48 volt system and, uh, and I also have two of these 6 volts for a 12 volt system. So I, I call this like a hybrid system with both uh, 48 and 24. And uh, it's also connected to a brand new 48 volts uh, inverter of uh, 3000 watts. That should be enough for what we need for quite some time. Um, should even be able to power or charge the, the leaf. But I haven't tried that yet because we produce so little now in the winter. I just trust it will work for when we get there. And then uh, this is now a little shelf for different charging things. Uh, so I can charge all my kind of batteries from solar and I installed some monitors here um, uh, one where I can see the current let's see there the current going in or out of the batteries and then uh, this should be a system overview there's no AC loads at the moment, it's, the inverter isn't on. And then we have this... Um, yeah, it's a little Raspberry Pi where I can go in and I can see some data about solar, uh, how it's been charging and stuff. I can also um, go and check weather things and stuff like that. So I'm liking this setup. It's this is 100% powered from solar. The only thing that's not is the the switch for internet. It's up there. That one goes to a normal outlet, and then um, down here is the outlet that that one is connected to. But I'll look into getting that one on the solar as well later on. And so, um, from this, uh, everything is charged into the battery bank for 48 volts, and then there is a little regulator here that converts 48 to 12 volts at 20 amps that maintains this battery bank, and it can provide me with 12 volt power for whatever I want that uses 12 volts, uh, like the electric fence we have for the animals and tried with a little lamp here as well, 12 volt lamp. I'm thinking about installing a little bit more 12 volt equipment. There is also a lot of these USB cables. This comes uh, regulated from, from the 12 volts. Then I can charge anything USB related also.
from solar. Um, and I want to to look a little bit into this um, difference between um, a sine wave inverter, which is this new one. It's a pure sine wave inverter, which is um, something that I would want for the leaf. I'm not sure if it would charge from a square web, but I am sure that it will charge and have no issues with the sine wave. There's also other stuff that I would never run over a square wave inverter. The only thing that I would be confident about would be a heating oven. And we did try that from the 12 volt setup. But uh, from 12 volt, and then when you do heating, it requires so much power, the cables run warm, and it wasn't nice. So uh, it will be a lot better to have it on 48 volts. But I did set up this is uh, a 12 volt a square wave inverter, and I wanted to see or show the difference so that you can see what is the actual difference between a square wave and a sine wave inverter of their output. So here we can measure the, or see the frequency. So if I turn this box on and I can plug in this one into the old 12 volt square wave inverter there. and then that cable is just not wired well now it's loose let's see I have to hook this cable on just let me put the camera down and to hook the this one on here, it's connected, there, so then both of these are connected and I can then see what's coming out um, of the inverter here. You can see it's fairly, fairly square, so that's not what I want to power up the fine electronics from, or the leaf that matter. So uh, if I remove this one um, and then move the cable up to the new inverter that I have an outlet for here and then turn this one on over there and then look back down here and then you can see it's a very different picture. It's a nice sign pulse from that inverter which is what I wanted. So, you can power anything like normal from this one. And it being 3000 watts means that I can charge anything that would run off a 10 amp normal house. Um, fuse, force, what's it called, I'm not sure. But um, the normal ones are at least 10 amps and and uh, anything I can power off those, I can power off this one. It will give a total of roughly 13 amps, I guess. And um, that means that I can run the leaf, which requires or uses about 10 amps. And then I have three left, which is uh, about 700 watts. So. I could run the leaf and something else at the same time, like charging laptop or yeah, more even like seven ham seven hundred amps is a lot. Or seven hundred watts is a lot. Seven hundred amps is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um so yeah, that was a little update of uh, the state at the moment. I'll, next step will be to yeah, remove this one. This was just for a setup so that I could show the difference between the square wave and the sine wave. And then um, I was thinking to connect all of these wires neatly on this little board here so that it's more tidy.